Good afternoon, friends, colleagues. We now have a very important session of the live case from uh, Apollo Hospital, Chennai. Uh, and this is sponsored by Merrill. As you would have understood, as we have moved uh, to low risk patients of uh, calcific aortic stenosis, the patients are younger now. And therefore, it becomes our responsibility to start understand, understanding the lifetime management of these patients, as we now have to look at their 15 years, 20 years, even 30 years of their lifetime in many instances. And therefore, we are becoming more aware of the fact that the first Im valve implant, the first transcatheter heart valve implant in them, is going to have to be thought through importantly, and is going to be an important part of the lifetime management. And therefore, today's session, which is titled Essentials of Lifetime Management in a Patient Undergoing TAVI Using a Novel Balloon Expandable Myoval Octocar. So today, through this live case, the learning objectives are to learn about this novel octocar transcatheter heart valve technology and its procedural and clinical advantages to the patient. We also want to understand the octa-aligned technique, which enables predictable and pre precise commercial and coronary alignment, thus preserving coronary access. Was it to be required in the future of the lifetime management of the patient, who has another at least 15 to 25 years ahead of him? And then to understand the technique, precise sizing, positioning, and deployment of the novel octocore transcatheter heart valve in a patient. So with, I'm Dr. Ashok Seth from New Delhi, India. So with me is my colleague and spokesperson, Dr. Andras Brombach. The procedural analyst is John Jose from uh, India. We have Michael Lee from Hong Kong, Muhammad Ali Rosli from uh, Malaysia, Davinder Chadda from India, and Dr. Damodran Kalyan Murthy from India as discussants. The operators from Apollo Hospital Chennai are going to be Dr. Singer Tuvelu with his colleague, Dr. Muthu Kumaran, and the medical coordinator is Dr. Inda Sukmavati. Please interact, please be a part of this session, be a part of the discussion, put your, put your questions, comments up on the chat, and we assure you that we answer them either during the case itself, during the discussion, or later on after the, after the case. There are standing microphones. You can use them, and we'll actually address those questions at the appropriate time to clarify them. With those words, look forward to the case, and I, leave it, I hand it over to my spokesperson to tell you about the case. Okay, so in, in this session, uh, what we do is we'll give some information to start with, and that is information about what you're going to see uh, in terms of technology. You may be familiar with the, with the MyVal uh, self-expanding um, heart valve system. Um, now we're talking about the next iteration, uh, a complete redesign, uh, which is called OctaCore. And I will show you why it's called that. The OctaCore system uh, consists, is, is, has evolved out of the, uh, the previous uh, technologies available. And it's now a real system with the heart valve uh, here and the navigator inception delivery system as part of it, the sheath. Um, and uh, you will see the crocodile uh, aptly named uh, crimping tool uh, that has a particular role in uh, achieving uh, alignment. So what's new, the octocore is, is simpler, uh, and it's a profoundly functional uh, design that shifts from, if you look at the early self-expanding valve with nine rows uh, to the standard uh, first generation balloon expanding valve with four rows, this has now two rows and a skirt. So what happens is it's just two rows geometrically identical stacked one above the other, forming the inflow and the outflow, as you can see down there. And uh, this incorporates a rhombus in the middle, 
which provides stability. So this is the design concept here. And this is how the valve looks like um, when it's uh, expanded. Uh, it's a cobalt alloy frame. It's the bovine pericardium tri-leaflet valve with the uh, Merrill proprietary tissue anti-calcification technology. It's got an internal pet sealing skirt and an external uh, skirt to uh, uh, combat uh, paravalvular leakage. The design has an interesting aspect in terms of uh, radio opacity. It, it gives a pattern and there is a marker for optimal uh, placement in the annulus, which is at 7030. The other interesting thing is the valve is crimped directly onto the balloon. There is no maneuver uh, necessary to bring the valve onto the uh, balloon. And the balloon itself has an interesting feature in that it uh, opens up on both ends as a dog bone, uh, which ensures really correct placement uh, and uh, eases the placement in the correct position. Another unique uh, point with this valve is the size ma matrix. Uh, there are intermediate sizes, so 20. You're used to 20, 23, 26. We have 21.5, 24.5, 27.5, and two large sizes, the XLs, that expand the range uh, of treatment uh, onto uh, an area of 800 square millimeter. And all this sizing, when available, is used. This is a, a survey uh, of global Europe, Italy, Netherlands. That's uh, areas where uh, these are all available. 6% of patients received the very large uh, valve uh, that uh, you know, is not available by other uh, competitors and the intermediate level is being used in more than a third. So very useful to appropriately size without having to put more volume or less volume into the balloon. The valve goes in as intended. And then uh, there is um, evidence uh, already there that the paravalvular leak is uh, rare and most uh, patients go away with mild or none uh, paravalvular leakage. Coming to the delivery system, these are the sizes. Uh, this is what it looks like. And then finally, the crocodile compass. We'll see a bit more about that uh, used to crimp uh, the valve directly on. And the sheath uh, is another unique uh, thing about this sheath is um, that it enables complete retrieval of the system if needed. Um, not that it's often needed, but there are situations where you have to come out like here. And again, that's not possible with other systems, but it is with this one. And the sheath is, has been used for all uh, access forms, the conventional femoral, but also transcaval, axillary, transapical. Right, uh, it says clinical uh, trials update. The reason I'm here is I'm the PI of a, a total of the landmark study. Um, we aim to randomize 768 patients. We're currently at 613, so nearly there. And it's a direct randomization of MyVal versus contemporary uh, valves, Sapien and Evolute in a two to one. And there's another trial going on in the north uh, of Europe. 968 patients already gone into a direct comparison of MyVal and uh, Sapien. So uh, by mid next year, probably we'll have randomized trials to underline the uh, clinical effectiveness and safety of this system. With that, I hand back to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Andreas. Uh, that was a great overview, and John is is going to tell us more about the octa line technique. Uh, thank you. Uh, my objective today is to introduce to you the octa line uh, technique of commercial alignment with the novel octaco valve. As TAVI expands to younger, low risk subjects with longer longevity, this is a need for increasing uh, coronary access and redo procedures. Uh, normally, we associate uh, commercial alignment with longer frame self-expanding valves, but there can be benefits even for balloon expanded valve, 
commercial alignment has uh, shown to improve hemodynamics and durability. It can also facilitate coronary access post-TAVI and redo TAVI procedures. So the basic octaline technique is an easy way of achieving commercial alignment with the novel octaco valve, which is a balloon expandable valve. The basis for the octaline technique is as follows. In a native tricuspid valve, anatomy, the three commissures are separated at about 120 degree angle. And even the commissure post of octaco valve is also separated at 120 degree angle. Directly opposite to the right coronary mid cusp is the left and the non coronary commissure. Usually, the right coronary artery originates from the middle of the right coronary cusp, and the left coronary artery originates from the mid portion of the left coronary cusp. The second premise is the fluoroscopic image or this CT image is a mirror image of the anatomical or the AP view. So, therefore, in order to achieve commissure alignment, we have to align one of the commissures of the octaco valve to the mid sinus of the right coronary cusp in an image obtained from CT. And when this is uh, achieved, the neo commissures will be minimally misaligned to the native commissures. So here are the steps of the novel octaline technique. From a dedicated imaging software like 3 mesh Show, we capture the transverse cross-sectional or the root axial image of the mid sinus of Valsalva. And on this image, we draw a horizontal center line passing through the center of the circle. We drop a perpendicular line intersecting this center line at the center of the circle. And point of uh, intersection of these lines, we label it geometric nodule of sinuses. We identify the mid of the right coronary cusp. And we connect the geometrical nodule of the sinuses with the middle of this right coronary cusp. An oblique line is formed here. The angle formed by this oblique line and the horizontal line is called as the angle of commercial alignment. Now, when we superimpose the face of a clock over this cross-sectional image, we get a clock angle. And the corresponding clock angle corresponds to the angle of commercial alignment. So there can be three variants of the anatomy clock angle. There can be a uh, right angle or the 3 o'clock position. There can be an obtuse where it is less than 3 o'clock or an acute angle where it is more than 3 o'clock. So for bicuspid anatomies, we propose a coronary alignment. And as you can see here, the clock angle is derived by the angle formed between the horizontal line and the line connecting the right coronary artery instead of the mid of the right coronary cusp. And uh, once we identify the clock angle, we take the uh, crocodile compass or the crimping device. We make sure one of the three commissures is aligned to the derived clock angle from the analysis mentioned above. And as you can see here, uh, the crimping is done in that manner. So when you do crimping, we have to make sure that the delivery system is not flexed and the mirror or the company logo is facing upwards. As you introduce the delivery system through the vessel, also make sure the logo is facing upwards. So I'll give you some examples of the octaline technique done with some patients. First case is a patient with a tricuspid aortic valve. As you can see here, the middle of the right coronary cusp is at 3 o'clock position. So the crimping will be done at 3 o'clock position, making sure that one of the uh, commissures of the novel uh, valve is in that position in the crocodile compass crimping tool. We actually did this as a live case. And here you can see the uh, uh, deployment of the octocore valve. This is a patient who had a uh, previous bioprosthetic valve in the mitral position. This uh, slide actually also shows uh, a perfect stable uh, deployment of the octocore valve. And there's also minimal foreshortening. Post deployment, uh, uh, you can also make out uh, if the commercial alignment is appropriate or not. Uh, in a, uh, implantus view or the three cusp view, if uh, one of the commissure posts is in the midline, uh, it means that uh, it, there could be a perfect commercial alignment. It could also be that uh, uh, there is a 180 degree misalignment. So how to make sure you can do a little bit of angulations, and that way you can see if, if the commissures are anterior or posterior. Alternatively, you can make this out in the cusp overlap view, the right, on the right left cusp overlap view, if the two commissures are on the left of the screen, as you can see in the image. And there's one commissure uh, on the right of the screen. 
then it means that there is a perfect commercial alignment. Uh, you can make out the commissures of the octocore by looking at the picture here above. Uh, the commissure post are, uh, looks like this series of small uh, circles. And you can also identify this on the fluoroscopy. So post uh, uh, CT of the patient uh, uh, shows a perfect commercial alignment for this case, as you can see here in the image. Next is a patient with a type 0 bicuspid uh, anatomy. Sometimes when you have bicuspids, the coronaries arise uh, diagonally opposite to each other. So which means that you may not use uh, coronary alignment in some bicuspid valves. You may have to actually use the commercial alignment, uh, commercial angle. And that is what we have done for this uh, patient. Again, this patient has minimal misalignment. So only yesterday, we actually have this uh, publication uh, of our commercial alignment technique. This is an initial series of patients. Dr. Seth and Sengu were also uh, quite actively involved in this uh, paper. And we found that about uh, more than 70% of patients had commercial alignment with our novel technique. We are still in the early phases, but uh, we are quite hopeful that this uh, technique is quite useful and may be adopted to other uh, balloon expandable valves as well. Thank you for your attention. Right. So, th so that was good. Uh, so we're now going to have a patient uh, undergoing an octocar. And uh, Andreas is going to tell you about the patient. Uh, Right, this is the patient uh, on the table in Chennai. Um, it is a 72-year-old lady with no comorbidities, uh, but uh, severely symptomatic with dyspnea uh, over the last six months. And uh, as a cause, it was found she has a severe aortic uh, stenosis. You can see her um, um, data here, height 154 white, uh, 72 kilos, that gives her uh, a body mass index of around 30. Um, frailty scale, 5 out of 17, and you see the STS and Euro score as well uh, as an ECG that um, shows sinus rhythm and no uh, other, up, no abnormalities. This is uh, the transthoracic uh, echo, which shows uh, aortic stenosis with a mean gradient of 48, a valve area calculated of 0.5 square centimeters. Uh, not, not a lot in terms of aortic regurgitation and trivial mitral and tricuspid. Um, the left ventricular ejection fraction is 68%, hence normal, as is the right ventricle. The CT coronary angiogram uh, showed a proximal 50 to 60% stenosis. She does not have chest pain on exertion, uh, circumflex, mid plaques, and uh, the right is non dominant. The calcium score overall uh, modest with uh, 43. And uh, for the CT analysis, uh, I hand over to our analyst. Thank you. So my role today as an imaging analyst is to take you through the CT data of the patient all the way from the heart down into the femoral axis vessels. So when you look at the aortic root complex of this patient, the first thing you notice is that this patient actually has small aortic annulus dimensions. The area-derived aortic annulus dimension is about uh, 21.4 perimeter of 68.6, which is actually quite small for a patient who has a body surface area of uh, 1.7. So you have to be really careful when you choose the valve, and especially valve type, and especially the size of the valve. The LVOT dimensions are slightly larger, and there are no calcification, no hostile features there. The coronary heights are actually quite uh, good, no concern there, especially given the fact that the sinuses are quite uh, wide. And when you look closely at the sinuses valsalva, slightly high up, you find a fusion between the left and the right cusp. So essentially, this is a type 1A bicuspid aortic valve. And I would like to call this as a functional fusion, or something like a tricuspid-like bicuspid uh, type 1A valve. Essentially, TAVI for this patient is similar to a TAVI in a tricuspid valve. Uh, so you also look at the intercommissional dimensions, and you find that that is wider than the analyst dimension. And 
At this point, I want to bring your attention to the LVOT morphology. Usually, you look at the analysis and the ICD dimensions and morphology in a patient with a bicuspid valve, but something you also should pay attention is the morphology of the uh, LVOT. So, you, therefore, you can have three types of morphologies. You can have a tubular morphology, you can have a flared kind of morphology, or you can have a tapered morphology. So, this patient, if you look at the image here, has got something like a tubular or slightly uh, funnel-shaped morphology. Now, you can actually take advantage of this morphology because you can actually implant the valve a little deeper, and a valve like Octocore, which has a higher ceiling skirt, you can implant it perfectly within this LVOT slightly deeper and without getting any paravalent leak. Whereas if you had a tapered kind of uh, morphology or a uh, flared morphology, if you're not careful and if your valve is deep, you can have uh, paravalent leaks. So moving over to the LVOT uh, and the annular calcification, uh, there's uh, calcium which is uh, moderately uh, uh, involving the non-coronary cusp predominantly. The calcium score is about uh, uh, 500 or so. And the calcium, as you can see here, extends predominantly involves the non-coronary cusp and involves the base of the non-coronary cusp. This is actually quite important because uh, uh, sometimes if you have basal heavy or sharp calcification, you can have uh, in injury to the aortic root sinuses. Almost behaves like as if you had uh, calcium in the annulus. And if you have a patient uh, with a calcified raphe, and when you implant a slightly oversized valve, we can actually push the calcium outwards, resulting in a pericardial effusion or even sometimes communication between the aortic root into the one of the chambers. You can have a communication between the aortic root or the atrium or the ventricle. The leaflet heights of this valve uh, show that they are actually quite below the level of the coronary heights, uh, which means the risk of coronary occlusion is quite low if you use a shorter frame valve. And when you simulate by putting a 23 mm valve, you find that there is sufficient space around the valve, which means the risk of coronary obstruction is quite low. This is important This is a, because it's a younger patient. She also got uh, minor or intermediate coronary artery disease involving the left uh, coronary system. This is the angle of deployment uh, that would be used uh, in this case. Typically, balloon expandable valve is implanted in the coplanar or the three cusp view. We also got this left right uh, cusp overlap view. At the end of it, if you want to see if there's a commissure alignment or not, uh, this view would be useful. Femorals, uh, no high risk features. The uh, vessels are quite uh, uh, nice. Uh, the size is more than 6 or 6.5, the mean size, which means it's good for a transfemoral uh, TAVI. And finally, if you want, if the implanters want to use an embolic protection device, uh, it's also uh, the anatomy is also quite uh, adequate and good for uh, using that uh, system. And I also did a simulation with all different valve size, and all of these valve are suitable for this patient. If you use a shorter frame valve, or if you use a uh, valve like Accurate Neo 2, and if you adjust and play with the depth, you can actually escape uh, having. Uh, coronary occlusion or reaccess problem. But if you use a valve like a self-expanding valve or evolute, then the coronary commercial element is, becomes quite important. So the, you have choice of using either a 21.5 or a 23 mm octoco valve. If you use a 21.5, the oversizing is about 0.9%. Uh, but if you use a larger valve, the oversizing is about 15.5%. And finally, the angle of the uh, commercial alignment. Uh, we did the analysis for that, and we found the commercial alignment angle is at uh, clock position of uh, 257, and that is where the one of the my wells octocores commissions will be crimped. With this, I leave you for discussion. Thank you. Thank you, John. So we'll, while we discuss this, we'll have the brief of the patient right in front of us. And so, Michael, uh, 
73-year-old, uh, could we have the slide up again, please? 73-year-old, you've seen the CT, yeah. uh, small annals. Uh, what would be your practice in Hong Kong? Yeah, um, this is a um, 72-year-old uh, female. If you look at the risk score, very, very low risk, uh, STS of two. So uh, with no other comorbidities, so if we are going to um, perform TAPI for this particular patient, I think her lifetime management, as mentioned by Andreas, mm -hmm. would be very important. So we, apart from aiming at perfect result uh, during the procedure and avoid acute procedural complications, we should look at the long-term uh, follow-up of this patient as well. So uh, for this particular low-risk young patients, I would pay particular attention to the future coronary access she will have um, the need to um, go f after her coronary arteries in the very near future. So um, uh, as mentioned by John, commissure alignment is very important for these sort of low-risk uh, patients. Uh, and then uh, we should try to aim at a low pacemaker rate. I don't know about the uh, uh, membrane septum yet, the length of the septum, but uh, I think for this particular valve, you would not be implanting this particular, uh, this particular valve at a low position. So I think the pacemaker rate would be low. And then the velocity durability. I think this is something we have to know more about this valve. I'm not too familiar with this valve on the durability. But I guess it would be uh, at least the same as the uh, Sapien valve. Thank you. Th Michael, from what you said, it automatically appears that you committed yourself to TAVI in a 72-year-old in Hong Kong. Uh, though this is a low-risk patient, uh, and though this is bicuspid, you've committed yourself to TAVI in this patient. Well, I think we have to talk to our surgeons uh, in the heart team meeting, and then we have to decide together. Of course, we take into consideration of the patient's preference. Right. Because in this locality, as you know, patients always prefer less invasive procedures. Sure, and, I, and, 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 and in uh, Hong Kong, the life expectancy of patients is above 80 years, from what I understand. Yes, well above 80. Uh, for females, it's 89. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So, so uh, Rosalie, uh, you know, you, you just heard around, around uh, this sort of situation. Let's, ex let's understand that, yes, we're uh, clear about TAVI, and, and we've decided on TAVI based on the patient's preference, uh, whatever. Uh, what's your choices around valve in such situations? Do you have any choices? Uh, around what you think she should have uh, uh, in, a low, in, a, in a small analyst? Yeah, I think uh, uh, those, uh, you know, the lifetime management is uh, extremely important. On our side, uh, we tend to use more um, and concentrate more on the self-expandable uh, valve, though for this year we've actually started to use my valve. I think uh, this, um, uh, this uh, valve can actually be used uh, with uh, whatever valve that you think uh, of course, uh, to me, uh, I'll be a bit, a bit concerned about oversizing, and uh, you may start off with a, a smaller valve, and you can actually, actually expand it a bit bigger. So I, I believe any any valve would be fine. Yes. Yeah, so, so you think that uh, in this case, if you did get a 23 millimeter, I think that would be a good balloon expandable valve, and not necessarily a supraanalyst self expandable valve, yep. which yep. seems fair. And uh, you need to get a 23 millimeter in. So. Uh, bicuspid. Now, here's here's the situation. Uh, tricuspids would not be a concern. Uh, the other one is bicuspid uh, uh, anatomy a concern to you? Do you think differently of a bicuspid anatomy than a tricuspid anatomy? In, say the choice of uh, choice of therapy, transcatheter heart valve versus surgery. And secondly, do you think of uh, of different valves in a bicuspid anatomy? Uh, of course, uh, the. If we are committed after a hard team discussion because the uh, risk score is low risk score without any comorbidities, we need to always give a choice for a surgical replacement also depending on the life expectancy of the country. Obviously in our country, the 73 is the uh, uh, borderline area we can take either choices, either a TAVI or a, a SAVR. And of course we need to look at the long-term management in terms of uh, intervention for a coronary access and uh, in this case as you rightly asked that either of these valves can be possible because there is no issue with the coronary uh, osteo position as well as uh, the calcification so we can either go for a self-expandable or a balloon expandable valve. Concerning the bicuspid, Dr. John has nicely explained 
But one thing I want to emphasize is the RAFE calcium also very important when we are selecting the valves or in the technical issue. The rest of the things he is explaining. Sure, I think that, that that that's been a good discussion. I just wanted to point out that the life expectancy of uh, women in India is 67 and men is 68. Uh, obviously, this differs from patient to patient and has to be individualized because life expectancy is longer in the upper strata of the society and better economic strata of the society. So much of that goes into consideration when Dr. Sengatuvil is doing the, this case. Coronary occlusion or threatened coronary occlusion or need for coronary protection, would you like to uh, or address bad, the audience? Or a bad outcome. Yeah, so, or a bad outcome. Yes, I think we, we, we learned, uh, not least uh, from the paper from Raj Makar, um, that it, it's not the type or the fact that it's bicuspid what makes uh, procedures sometimes prone to complications. Uh, bicuspids can be heavily calcified and they can come with lumps of calcium and if that lump is on the wrong, in the wrong place uh, then uh, it can lead to uh, coronary obstruction, even if the coronaries are in the, in the normal uh, height. So what's essential is what we've seen uh, uh, is, is to really look into the CT scan with a view to are there any lumps of calcium, which leaflet, where do we think uh, these, uh, these calcium particles will go? In this case, uh, it's mostly in the non-coronary uh, cusp, so we're pretty certain this will just be pushed away and will not threaten the coronaries. Thank you. So uh, we've agreed that we'd go for a, uh, uh, we, this would be a TAVI. Uh, and uh, keeping in mind the 72-year female and uh, hopefully she's got a long life expectancy and it's certainly in many countries she does have a long life expectancy. This would be a balloon expandable valve, uh, as long as we can get a larger balloon expandable valve into her, and certainly not a small balloon expandable valve. And if we could get that in, that would actually be a good lifetime management for the case, primarily because we'd have access to coronaries and the ability for a second valve in a much easier manner were it to be needed in the future. So I think now with this discussion, we can go to Dr. Singer Tuvelu and for him to come on and tell us what he's uh, planning and what he's doing. So, Dr. Singh Tuvelu. Hello, everyone. Back to see you again. Now, we have my colleague, Dr. Muttu, and Dr. Sentil from Mapu Chennai. So, we hear so you, but we're not us? seeing you, and, and therefore, we just, just, uh, we'll just get you on the screen so that everyone's able to see you as well as listen to you. In the meantime, yes, we are now seeing your screens. Great. Happy to be back again. And uh, this is my Muthu, my colleague, and Dr. Sendil. So, uh, can I have the first slide? My key object uh, of this. Secretary Tuvelu, could you just hold on? You're still not on our screen. Next slide. However, you can continue to tell us about the case because we've seen the case. So, you can tell us what you want to do. Okay. Go ahead. So we can see the you key now. Objectives of this. Great, great. So the key objectives of this uh, live demonstration is to show you all the key procedural steps of TAVI and demonstrate uh, my valve octocar, the new gen valve. Uh, it's a balloon expandable valve about commercial alignment and uh, also show the octo align technique. Uh, and uh, finally, also show uh, post TAVI assessment and uh, show the benefits of lifetime management. As you uh, we were listening to your discussion, I think we'll, we'll try to put a large valve and we'll try to see so avoid pacemaker as much as possible and we'll try to avoid a PPM. So that's and I have a coronary access for using this pollen expandable valve. So, so the strategy today is uh, use conscious sedation and uh, we use a transvenous uh, pacing and uh, an ultrasound guided uh, so single right femoral axis. We'll use a right radial axis for a pigtail and we usually use a single proglide and also an angioseal if necessary. So again, we were debating about whether we predilate or not, and finally we decided that uh, we will predilate. I think this uh, anatomy with very minimal calcium uh, it is, uh, uh, can also go directly, but we decided that we will do with the uh, 18 millimeter. The minimum diameter of the annulus is 18 millimeter, so we decided that we will predilate with the 18 millimeter mammoth balloon, and then plan a 23 millimeter my valve. And as uh, here from your discussion, we would the considering that the LVOD is large. 
uh, we would plan a larger valve, which will give better hemodynamics. Next slide. So as far as the tools and techniques, we're going to show you a new uh, sheath, which is a 12 French Python. So Python initially we're using 14 French, and today we are moving to smaller size, and this 12 French can take up to 23 valve. So we will show you how we can take the valve through the 12 French Python, and we'll use an extra extra small Safari wire, and uh, and a my valve 23. So let's uh, go. So we at this at this stage, uh, we have taken a ultrasound guide. Can I show that picture? We have taken a, a right femoral axis uh, using the ultrasound. Show the ultrasound, please. So it, there is, you can see some. Uh, so using the ultrasound, we were able to puncture the screen. Uh, so you can see the needle, uh, the wire going in through the femoral artery, and uh, we, then we put a uh, we put a one proglide at 12 o'clock position. Normally we do one put one proglide, and then we put the 12 French Python sheath on the right femoral axis, and we have a radial uh, axis, and we have done an iotogram through the right axis, a pigtail in the right coronary sinus. You can look at the uh, we, the, the CT measured the coplanar view was uh, RAO3 scottle 7. We were having we were having a good uh, uh, commission, the coplanar view angiographically as you can see we get a good uh, all the uh, all the sinuses in one plane. So we are at this stage. Now we are going to uh, cross the valve and then pre dilate and then take and show you the how we crimp the octocar. So we will let you carry on and uh, tell us step by step because that's what we want to hear. Our interruptions would be least so that we can keep hearing step by step from you. See some loop in the radial artery, so but we were able to manage the pigtail. Uh, so tell us your strategy so this, this of crossing the valve. Amplet. Yeah, yeah, this is an Amplet's uh, left uh, AL1 catheter. So we would surf the valve. We looked at the, uh, and the iotogram, and you could see the, the iotic valve opening in the, in the middle of the right sinus. I don't know whether you could see. We should play the, uh, the, right, the iotogram, please. So you could see, if you can see the iotogram very well, you can see the, uh, the, there is a calcium. The pigtail is in the right coronary sinus. You can see the, the valve opening. So I would direct my wire around this area. A transmission. Mm -hmm. So this is your obviously a O35 metal wire and an AL1. Yes, so it's a Teflon wire, O35. It's an AL1. Yeah. You're trying. Mm. So while you keep trying, you do you have any special tricks and tricks? No, I keep rotating the uh, the uh, the AL1, and then I, from clockwise, uh, keep rotating it, and then taking the wire up and down. So okay. uh, while he's trying it and we're looking at it, I'm sure we're not interrupting anything, Michael, by asking you, uh, do you have any special tips and tricks for crossing the valve? Well, um, I still we usually start with the AL1, but you have to uh, analyze the angiogram beforehand. You you will probably see the opening uh, of the aortic valve yeah. better sometimes in the cups overlap view. You can see a better opening, and uh, sometimes you just target at that opening. But so if it's the, a bicuspid valve. Yeah, if the aortic uh, root is too big, sometimes we ch I change it to AL2. Yep. Or even the Jenkins right yeah. catheter. So which yeah. which what which Jenkins right catheter did you yeah. give? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's fair, and and yeah, uh, we can try the Judkin, we can try the Judkins, right? So or we can use a. Uh, so so John, what's your algorithm? A, a, a thermal uh, wire. Yeah. If, so if as happens in so in a live case, you can sometimes, sometimes try for you know when you, when in a known live case you can cross in thirty seconds in a live yeah. case. <laughs> It takes longer. So what's your algorithm yes. for, so for that? Usually I start with an AL1 and a uh, O3-5 regular wires. Mm. Sometimes uh, if that doesn't work, I will switch to a thermo wire. Mm. And if that doesn't work, if it isn't a horizontal thermo one, thermo. I would probably upgrade this to an AL1 to thermo. AL2. Uh, some, sometimes in bicuspids, you can actually use the cusp overlap, uh, overlap technique. If, you can, if it's a left-right fusion, you do the left-right fusion and that way you will separate the opening better. That's another yeah, way of doing it. 
and uh, like michael said like uh, you can also try spacing at slow speed so that if uh, crossing can be if, easily if. done so so uh, i think you've just heard some of the you know what i think the best consensus i've heard yeah. is keep poking keep poking. and and you get through there's a couple of <laughs> yeah there's a couple, Monday. couple more things you can do <laughs> Um, I don't know whether they've changed the wire now. I think they've changed they have. the wire. I think, I think they changed it to Terumo. That's a Terumo wire, which is A, slippery, and B, yeah, that's changes, a Terumo wire. Yeah. changes the conformation of the amplets uh, and the approach. Can you change the catheter if yeah. needed, okay? In very hard cases, I've seen uh, people uh, go into rapid pacing. Ch change operator. Give me the wire. Please. And sometimes that's in, also uh, happens. Horizontal anatomy. <laughs> or change <laughs> operators. Is, We've done that yesterday. That happens yeah. sometimes. <laughs> we can yet. also change the catheter. We'll change the catheter. Yeah. We'll change yeah. the catheter. If not, then it will change the operator, as you said. <laughs> and and you know, uh, we saw. We can see that there's a calcium sitting on the calcium. Yeah, it's a very tight valve from the measurements, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. Okay, what is it? change the catheter? And sometimes and in, in bicuspids, the catheter, of course, the, the angle is, is, is what? Yeah, yeah, right. slightly yeah. oblique. Yeah, exactly. For bicuspids, sometimes you need to really? go That's in correct. the center. What is this so, one? You could even try a guide, for example, X, B, or... So, so JR4 is sometimes a good idea. one Gale 1, new. new uh, and, uh, yeah, the, the the only additional uh, technique that I use, uh, which you uh, which usually is good for tricuspids, is that you go to the non coronary sinus and then rotate the catheter as you come to the right, and then your wire drops in. Yeah, and that's uh, very good for symmetrical valves. But asymmetrical valves like bicuspid are, Give me a are you just have to search out the orifice. New Teflon yeah. wire. New Teflon straight. Yeah. So, so tell us what you're doing, uh, uh, Sengu. Uh, is that uh, we we, we 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 thought the AL2 was a little bigger curve, so we changed to AL1. Okay. Let's give me the Stefflon wire back again. Let's see. Other, other option is Judkins go the wire. Let me try with the Judkins. Otherwise, Judkins right. I usually uh, also like look at the angiogram wire. at this stage yeah, to yeah. see whether there is a, a visible opening or jet. It sometimes helps with the approach, uh, with the angle of approach. Why are you doing this? an eccentric thing. Right, right. Yeah. Has anyone ever considered, like, for if you try it so long and then that doesn't work, do a septal puncture and come retrograde? <laughs> it's like, let's, let's all get like, that. Yeah, we can do that, but I'm still yeah. confident no, we can get I think it. you keep trying, <laughs> and uh, we're, we're with you. We're, we're, we're uh, booting for it. We're going to change your operator. Let me try, Mutu. Yeah, let's change the operator and see. <laughs> change <the> operator. <laughs> or we can do one thing. Give me a J and Judkins right, please. Give me a Judkins right next. Of course, was ev what everybody hates is you change operator and he goes in in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a J out of the way. No, it, it, it'll cross. You know, it happens to it all of us. It, it uh, does. It's six. it's extremely yeah. rare for to do anything else apart from trying, and it does invariably cross. Even if I remember a live case, it took me, give me, give me, give me. 15 minutes to cross, but five so minutes the, to do the, the case. The, the other thing, maybe for the audience that's not used he's, to it, he's, he's changed. What, one way of looking at... at uh, at uh, and and okay. orienting and it Jackson's is to see the wire no. go into one direction, Jackson's right? Into one sinus, and when he turns the catheter, it goes into the other sinus. Then we usually aim in between those two Jackson's situations. Right. Right. Yeah. Take it out. As opposed to being in a always in the same sinus, then you're definitely right. against the wall and and wrong, right? So is it still the Terumo wire? Changing catheters. Change cath yeah, but, no, but we with the Terumo wire. The Teflon wire. It's taking a Judkins, right? Yeah, we'll try with Judkins with Terumo wire. Give me a Judkins. Yeah. Tick. <laughs> okay. So while we're coming to that, this and you keep, not a very... keep, and we'll keep watching as you change, keep yeah, telling yeah. us what you're doing. Sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. Uh, sure. Rosely, yeah. uh, pacing. Uh, you know, he's got obviously a pacing in the right ventricle. 
Uh, I think he's put it to the neck because he said, are we pacing? And uh, so what's, what's your usual yeah. practice? Yeah, I uh, with uh, the uh, sub expandable, we tend to put from the uh, internal jug, and uh, we still keep the TPM for about a day, even though now I think uh, there's ways to identify if the person can actually be safe without Give me uh, the other wire. going to a permanent pacemaker. There we are. From, um, from the if let's say we use self expandable yeah. with uh, using it from the uh, femoral because yeah. it, uh, it's quite safe to take it out immediately after that. Yeah. So uh, while while you know yeah. obviously pacing over the wire is not for everyone. No. Uh, those with uh, clearly the right one are not uh, the ones yeah. that are actually uh, pace on the wire. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, I'm so I'm somewhat reluctant on the balloon expandable valves to miss out any pacing. Mm. Uh, yeah. well, well, for we, us, even for balloon expendable, we use LV pacing all the time. Yeah, you 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 do wire pacing. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yes. I know. Those who got used to wire pacing do it on the balloon We're expandable. Very stable. But, uh, Nowadays, uh, what we are doing because we are using the Sentinel device, there's a guide wire there. Yeah. So we one end connected to the uh, this uh, LV guide wire, and the other end is to the coronary guide wire that you put in the Sentinel. Cool. So you can have very good pacing. Oh. We we are going to publish senti pace <laughs> very soon. That's, 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 that's nice. That's, that's a nice idea. idea. I mean, oh, pacing yeah, errors in balloon expandable valves can be disastrous. That's, 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 I know, that's but uh, I mean, with self expanding and okay, sure uh, other valves, it's, so, you can still. So in a way, uh, you yeah, know, we can be divided on this discussion for a long period of time as to to yeah, to okay. why and how. But I think at the end, you get used to a safety, the gradient, and that's I think what matters. Otherwise, a temporary yeah. uh, balloon tip pacing wire is no big deal. Yeah. yeah. Question. So, so, so tell us the gradient. gradient. Tell us more. The hemodynamics. Uh, the gradient is almost uh, 10, 20, 40. 40. 40 millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, leave it. Why am I colored? Oh my God. The pigtail is slightly out. Okay, 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 that's fine. That's pigtail. Okay, great. Push this. Hold. Okay. Okay. Good. Watch the wire. Watch the wire. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, okay. Why are so we what, seeing an echo image the there all the time? We We decided to pre-dilate. Yeah, we are seeing an echo because Sir Dr. Chandrasekhar is just doing an echo and looking at the valve. Uh, looking at uh, getting ready he basically we want to show you uh, we try to we want to at least try to show you a commercial alignment by echo after deploying the valve so that's what we are seeing most of the t it will be very clear to show that but let's see if we can show it to you in the trans thoracic echo so so yeah uh, so uh, as we are going to take the pre dilatation i'm going to show you the octocuff so we have decided for a 23 millimeter valve i want you to focus on the valve can you show the valve on the big screen can you just focus on the file? So, so, yeah, just focus on the valve. Can, yeah. So, can you see that? Yes, we can. Hope you can see the valve. We can. So, you can, you can see the, the large uh, large cells. You have only two rows. You can see the large cells and you see a skirt. So, now we're going to do a, uh, crimp the valve again using the crocodile. So, we will show you how we align it. So, we saw in the clock angle it was uh, 257, which means that. Uh, the center of the right coronary sinus is at 257. So when we position based on the CT, exactly we keep the, the myval come, the octocar commissure at the 257. You can see that you're pointing out. Hmm. So if you're going to keep one of the commissures at that 257, and we without changing the alignment, we take in straight inside. When you go inside, it just becomes a mirror image, and you will see the, the new commissure going in exactly opposite to the right commissure. So if we align one commissure, then you'll have a good alignment of other commissions. Can you focus here? So we will show you they're, they're crimping the valve. I'll show down here, valve crimping. So Maluna again, it's important to see the orientation of the valve. You can see the skirt is, the skirt of the valve is above. We see the orientation is good. And now he's going to con confirm the alignment. Can you focus more? Yeah, just focus and show the 257 angle. You point out, you point out with the small knee. It's 257, you can point out here. So if you can see that, this is, a, this is a superimposed clock angle. You can see the 12 o'clock. 
And now we see the commissure. One of the commissures is exactly at 257. So, Zoom. So, so, so that's what we have. Now you can crimp the valve completely. So you're good to go. Yeah. So, okay. So as they're getting the final crimping, we're getting the balloon inside. So come, keep the wire open. Jitran, show sure, you. Go, go, show. Okay. Okay. Small test, pigtail, sure please. Small you. test. Not that cool. Give a test in the pigtail, please. Give a test in the pigtail. Okay, we could see that the pigtail is a non coronary sinus. So we are good to go. Okay, pacing ready? Yeah. Be ready for pacing? Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pacing on. Pressure should drop nicely. Yeah, pressure dropped. Okay, now inflate. Okay, it's good inflation. Stop pacing. Good, good. So, uh, uh, Michael. Yes. He's going to now get the valve in. Uh, in the meantime, we can still ask you about this uh, cerebral protection bit, uh, which sounded as if you are 100% cerebral protection. Uh, no, no, not 100%, but we would talk to our patients because it is a sort of patient-paid item. Is it a patient-paid yes, item? Yes, patient-paid. Okay. The and then we talk to them, we show them the evidence, and then show them the, what we have retrieved in the past and then let them decide right. whether they want to have this or not. Which is absolutely fair. If it's patient yeah. paid, then I think you have to inform them. Yes. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, yeah. actually what happens in it's, uh, Malaysia for? It's the same, but in our center, we're using about 70%, um, I think, uh, of center right now. The only time that, uh, or rather the ones that we really will be uh, against using it is when it's really tortuous. We find that there's no control, it's very difficult to deploy. And those are the cases that, uh, upon assessment, we will see no. Right. So you're not selective. Uh, and Michael, your, your, your selection is not based on, on the substrate. Your selection is based on patient uh, agreeing yes. to pay for it. But for, for, but Theoretically, what you mean is you'd offer it to everyone. Yes, you offer it to oh, everyone. Good. Right. Well, well, especially those yeah. heavily calcified by cuspids while being involved. Sure. Yeah. Can you show the price? Keep the wire inside nicely. Well, that, so we will take the valve. Can you show the camera well. here? So, so, so I'm just going to show you that we keep the mirror logo up, and I'm not going to tilt or do so. I keep the same orientation so that we keep the clock angle throughout in the same direction. So that's very important for commercial alignment. Say that again, so Sengu. Another thing please, is, please. is a 12 French sheet. Mm -hmm. No, I was telling that this valve is already aligned. And we are not going to show any change any orientation. We're going to take the same direction without any tilting or, uh, or changing the direction because we want to go in the same direction to maintain the alignment. So this is a 12 French again. We're going to see how it goes. It's it's a new sheet. Can you show down? Because this is a new Python the, sheet. So there's force, forces needed to open it up. Yeah. So, so it's, it goes in smaller yeah, than it Yeah, is. it is. So this is a self-expandable. So did you think of uh, taking a 14 uh, or 16 dilator through it first? Can you show up also? We did that. We did that. We use a 16 French dilator yeah. and also see the wire. <laughs> we need quite a lot of force. It's interesting. Uh, sorry, yeah, we're going forward. And, show um, down. We have two cases where we had so a lot of problems with sheet, yeah. hidden. And we use proper four to line them, and that uh, allows us to go through. Right. So we can do that also. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, sure. so this just shows who yeah. exercises sure. most. <laughs> <laughs> and I do that, by the way. My my younger <laughs> colleagues are more muscular, and I just give up at this stage and just tell them to push it. Can you show the show the wire? Show the wire also. Make sure. 
We call that yeah, quite a bit more. Maybe change to Lundquist wire. You know. Uh, yeah. But, but this is more to do with no, the. No, we can the change the to 14 French uh, sheet if it doesn't this go. This is to do more to the sheet. Yes, yes. It just needs a lot of force. Once force. you get out of the sheet, it'll be free. But we know the, from the CT that there the is no underlying stenosis. Correct. If there the is, French. you can no, no. sometimes uh, yeah. get into trouble. Yeah. We have the option of changing to 14 French. This is there. It's going slowly. Slow, slow. Wait, wire, wire, wire. Wire, wire, wire. Show the wire. Okay, wire is good. Pull back, guys. Pull back, guys. Pull back. Pull back. Pull back. Pull back. I'm doing, doing. Can you show up, please? Show up, show up, please. Buckling. Yeah, I'm pulling. Can you show up? It'll go. It's just this is to do with the sheet. Yeah, that's a tight sheet. Come, show it, show it on. Yeah, it's gone. No, I think. It's gone, sir. Show, show. So, so the biggest issues are usually at the entry into the femoral, and then the first part of the femoral. And then it starts going unless there's a calcification to some flexion and a stenosis elsewhere. Right. And keep the keep the metal logo like this. Yeah. Keep the wire. Just don't push the wire too much on the back. Pushing. Just pull the wire a little bit. So so unlike so the Edwards, the valve, you don't need that, to lower check. the balloon. Nothing. Uh, yeah. There's no sheath across it. Yeah. It's directly yeah. mounted yeah. on a balloon. Small test, and yeah. What you don't see is that there are two Small ends case. of the balloon are stopping their, their the stoppers there, mm. and therefore it's not going to displace Move. itself. Why does it take so much? Uh, because there are two okay. restraining the valve. Restraining, Come to the slightly view, dilated the, the restraining the valve. Calling it stoppers. Come to the yeah. stoppers. What I've go to, got go to, to the say the when I showed the uh, delivery system is that it's an, uh, very, very deflectable. It can actually come back on itself. In case if you um, need to talk it at during the, I mean during place it well, will it affect the outer line? Yes, so uh, I can answer that question. If the mother was asking that uh, if the yeah. if you have to rotate okay. the valve while taking it, whether it will affect Take the it, it will affect it. It will affect you. That's okay. why the metal stays up and you just okay, go picture. in exactly the same manner, Take keeping it all the way. Okay. So, so tell me where you're placing it. View. it. Looks like you could see that. Looks so good. so it look. I'm see the central marker. What you see in the in the navigator delivery system, you can see a big marker. So that is actually a marker to position the valve, and provided the 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 the, the valve is uh, valve frames are properly mounted on the balloon. You can see that it is uh, uh, properly mounted. What I mean is uh, equally spaced between the two balloon markers. So now we can rely on the central big marker and uh, we can place it somewhere between the mid marker or the lower border of the marker. So this is the coplanar view. So I am trying to place it at the uh, somewhere around the mid, mid marker or the lower border. We can keep, keep it high, so lower border. So it looks like in the lower border, lower margin of the lower border of the big, big marker. So let me also take a RAO caudal view because you see one of the the, the valve still there is some looks like there is some amount of parallax. Come to Areo Cordal. That's right. Take so so come. Are you, you you this was your coplanar view. Yeah. Was this your coplanar view? Yeah. Some more caudal. Yeah. That was yes yes. That is a coplanar view. Okay. And now this is uh, Areo 30 caudal 34. Hmm. 34. This is a cusp overlap view. Okay. This is a cusp overlap view. And Just you take one picture here to see the depth. And you probably you removed the parallax also. Yes. Yeah, now you can see the parallax is removed. It's better. Hmm. So you could see that the depth is. Yeah, okay. it looks okay. It looks good. I think we want a, a zero or it looks good. Go it back would, to the it would end up as, as 90 so 10. Deploy. At this depth. 90 10 or even a zero position. So. Well, wouldn't yeah. aim for yeah, a zero position. Foreshot. And again, one of the features of this. Uh, yeah, this valve, uh, again, it won't foreshot in much uh, because yeah. of the only two rows. And, yeah. and the foreshortening is only 19%. Okay, ready for pacing? Yeah, pacing on. Pacing on. Yeah. Not this. Not this. Yeah. Okay, good. We are waiting for the pressure to drop nicely. Yeah, what's the pressure? Yeah, yeah get the pressure down. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, inject, inject, inject. Still get it low, no. low, gonna be the. Get it low. Okay, go, go, it, go, go, go for it. No. No. 
Itu lebih itu. Stop pacing. Okay, so, Russia is better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that was uh, f optimal 23 millimeters, correct? Yes, yes, nominal, nominal. We didn't reduce volume. We thought uh, because of a big LVOT, we thought it will take the volume and not very much of calcium. Mm. So around 300 was a calcium score. So we thought we should just go the, with the nominal. The STJ and was also large. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you remove the parallax a little bit? We'll take a hydrogram. No, oh, yeah. Come more caudal. So all looks good. The pressures seem good. Yeah, let's look at the. See, okay, okay, we'll take a hydrogram. Yeah. Ready. We take it. Yeah, we'll take a hydrogram. Ready. Central leak. Can so you, we are happy with the position. Yeah. And, uh, Can you just put it bigger on the on the on the screen, yeah. please? Yeah, that's Make better. it big screen, please. Make it bigger screen, please. Yeah. Yeah. Center. No, make it make it they, they should see the they're not yeah, good. No, it's just so may I have to... Yes. Ninety ten. Looks in good position. Perfect position. Yeah, what we want to show you now is the commercial alignment. Let us take this navigator delivery system out and then we'll show you. Yeah, the you just have to alignment. keep your Wires, wire. And... Can you push the wire a little bit? Yeah, yeah, we are doing that. Yes, sometimes you have a little central AR because of the wire that, that keeps the leaflet open. And that disappears when the wire is uh, moved or. Pulled out. Okay, let's do the echo now. Get, can, so, sure, so come to Copenhagen. So you, and see, you want to put a pigtail there and then do an echo because uh, otherwise you're not going to have the real picture. Yeah, we are doing that. Uh, uh, we are doing that. We're going to check the hemodynamics. As we are doing coplanar view, the valve implantation view, not the RAO cartel view. Okay, show the, the coplanar view and then RAO cartel view. So I want to show you the commercial alignment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you can see the one of the the commissures at in the middle. So which means we have we have commercial aligned. Let's look at the, uh, uh, the cusp overlap view. We are not getting to see the echo. Get the cusp overlap view. I will I will just showing the the commercial alignment. Then I show you the echo. So so this is the RL cusp overlap view. Hmm. And again, you can see that nicely here. No gradients. See here, you can see uh, you can see the two commissures. You can see that the transcatheter commissures on the left of the screen, and one which is not visible on the right. So we have clearly have commercial alignment. So let's now. I think this is again easy way to confirm that we have achieved commercial alignment. So let's uh, pressure. Can you can you uh, zero in pressure both? Zero pressure. Yeah, there's no gradient. Yeah, look. Show the hemodynamics. Yeah, good. So there is no gradient. And you can see the curves well separated. No, the there's no AR. Now, can we have the echo on the big screen? So let's see the echo and what you can have the echo what you wanting the to show screen. us on the echo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to show you the commercial alignment. We saw you. We showed that the commercial alignment in the fluoro. Hope you were able to appreciate that. Yes. So we were able to get a good no, zero gradient, and no AR. And uh, that you can see the, the conduction system is normal, so there's no need for any pacing. The, the, there's no uh, need for any pacemaker. So we are achieving what we wanted for a lifetime management. And now we'll show you the commercial alignment. Can you show the echo? It's, Get it's, the echo, please, on the screen. It's nice that you put in a 23 millimeter.
Okay, we do one diagram now. Okay, uh, Pictel, we'll do diagram from here. Sure, come. Show. Yeah. Come to reduce. Remove the parallax. Show the LV. Just one picture as we are done. For the echo, it's disturbing for them. You, you, yeah, you, take one picture and we are give, take. You're well in time. Don't worry. Yeah, come. Show the. Okay, great. Ready? Show the LV nicely. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Now, no AR. Mm -hmm. And let's show the echo now. Can you show the echo that, in big that's screen? That's a very nice position. Yeah. Can you show this in the big screen, Andrew? Show the fluoro in big screen now. Then and you know the the, the the Sengu, the 19% yeah. foreshortening that you talked about is sure. actually on both sides. Yeah. Show the together. Show this. Yes, you can see that there is the uh, we we wanted this uh, very ideally position, so so I think with this positioning I think we don't have any conduction disturbances at all and coronaries are easy to engage, so so this valve is actually good for her for a probably for her lifetime. Show the echo now and show the echo. Now you can see the echo. Yeah, you can see the arrow there, and there, there's a transcathetic commission as we are seeing. So you can see one, two, and three. You can see the coronary arteries origin between the commissures. So between the transcathetic commissures. Hmm. You can see the bright spots. That's that is the one of the transcathetic commissures. Hmm. You can see the three commissures, and you see the coronary here, the left coronary. Hmm. So it's clearly we have got uh, achieved commission alignment. Yeah. 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 Yeah, great. I think, uh, again, this is one of the ways to easily confirm that we have achieved coronary life. Perfect. So, that so by putting a 23 millimeter valve, we were able to give. Wait, can you show fluoro? Yeah. Yeah. So, can you? So you can see the circular deployment of the valve again. We, Bro. Dr. Sengu? Yeah. Yes, we, I can hear you. Yeah, what? while you're doing that, and I now, now know that you'll be just uh, taking the sheath out. Uh, and it's, it, we'll, we'll, we'll want to yeah, see that okay, as well, okay, because the session okay. includes end-to-end. -end. show you that. Can you put a dilator? Cut this off. You so you have a 12-French sheet, here, please? <coughs> which, of course, because, became 14. Yes, we have a 12-French sheet. Mm. It goes. Cut. Yeah. Uh, even Basically. more. So let's see whether your single proglide works. Yes. One question I have, uh, Sengu, yeah. is this sheath dilating up or yeah, is this uh, ruptured on the side? There we go, that's the answer. Can you show that? We'll just show it to you. It's What's okay. the mechanism of expansion? It's dilating. Mm. Show the, show the sheath to him. It's torn. Take it out. Show the sheath. Take this oh, show the camera on the sheet. I'll show, I'll show. Focus the camera here, please, on the sheet. Show the mechanism light. of uh, of expansion of the sheet. Light. 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 Yeah. Focus yeah. light on my hand. Just show the sheet. Focus the camera here. Focus the camera here, brother. It's low. It's still uh, intact. That uh, sheet is intact. It's expanded. It's not just. Not, it's not broken now. No. Very nice. There's, 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 there's a membrane there, which and it overlaps. And when you go in, it just separates out and then comes back in. Blade, blade. Cut this. Nice. Cut it here. Blade. I think. Oh. Is it a knife? 
Not Kushan. Sure. Yeah. Not Kushan, rather. I will be loud. Stop bleeding. What's happening? No. See, it's uh, actually stop bleeding some minimal wounds. Superficial wounds. I think I'm not going to be worried about this. Pull the wire out and then just give some pressure. Hmm. So some minimal wounds. Yeah, just hold for some time. So we're happy with just one proglide. Good. So Sango, that that's a great case. So what what are you looking at on the, on the monitor, so echo, echo, or are you looking at us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It looks very no, intense. No, we are looking at the monitor. You can see the gradient. Yeah, look at the gradient. I, I know you're mesmerized yeah. by your own work. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done an excellent job. <laughs> I must tell you that, that you've really done a remarkable job, yeah. uh, including showing a difficult wire crossing of the valve. Mm. And I know that you did that purposefully yeah, so, that, this one the... <laughs> so that everybody could understand and watch how to cross the valve. <laughs> Because you made everything <laughs> look so easy and simple. What is interesting is six. And uh, what is interesting is the mean gradient is only three millimeters of mercury. Hmm. I, I think we should show the gradients. In the, we'll show you the gradient by echo. We 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 saw everything of it. We 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 saw the yeah the 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 pressure, the hemodynamics, and now we're seeing the the echo. And not an RBC cross that valve mm -hmm. in the autogram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's an excellent uh, demonstration. I so I think. Uh, yeah. So any, seven anything and three. For, I mean, for, getting the three. Anything yeah. more for you to show us, uh, Sengu? No, I th I think we were ha very happy in the sense we were able to get all what we wanted. So for a perfect lifetime management. So this patient can have a coronary, I mean, they can engage the coronary later on. And if needed, a future tab and tab, no conduction disturbance, larger valve, better hemodynamics, so possibly better durability. So I am quite, we are quite happy with what we achieved for this lady. In the, in the next five minutes, you don't want to show us another case, isn't it? <laughs> You've done very well for time. <laughs> and uh, congratulations. We'll now go on to Thank the you. discussion, but congratulations on a wonderful case. Very well demonstrated, step by step, with an absolutely uh, amazing, uh, exemplary result, I would say, uh, through a through a twelve French sheath, which is of course a new Python sheath. So that was very nice. That was excellent. Thank you very much, Sengu, and your team, uh, Mutu. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, John. Yeah. Let's start with you. Yeah. Any comments on this? Any anything that you've got to? Yeah. So, uh, in terms yeah. of. Uh... So straight off, uh, excellent Tavi case, and I must say, Singu has done a good demonstration of uh, Tavi with octocode device, perfectly done. So uh, maybe I'll just go back to the drawing table and just to sh uh, show the. And this octocore, you saw that it's uh, an easy valve to implant. Uh, it's just like a stent balloon mounted stent and there you are just go in implant it but what's even more unique is the is the octocore uh octa line technique uh which Sengu showed was uh, predictable and uh, did what it was supposed to do give us scoring access and uh, commercial alignment go ahead john yeah just to emphasize the steps of the uh, octocore valve uh, deployment as you've seen this is a uh, uh, mounted valve, you don't have to do any manipulations extra. And uh, just quickly how to place the valve across the annulus. This valve is best deployed in the coplanar view. And uh, like Sengu showed, you have a prominent marker on the, the octocore delivery system. And you want to have the marker at this point. The lower part of the marker, if it is in line with the analyst plane, then you have a very good 95 to 90 and 5 to 10 deployment. That's one point. And uh, as we predicted in the CT analysis, the coronary axis was, uh, the cor there was no issue with the coronary uh, uh, obstruction or uh, no issues with coronary reaxis. But sometimes you have a situation where the uh, frame of the 
short frame balloon expandable or the octocore valve. Sometimes you have the situation if, if the valve is little high in a high position, you have a situation where the coron trees are coming like this, and then you have the valve frame sitting like this, two rows of cells. And sometimes you have a smaller sinus. So what are the easier, I just want to give some tips how to access coronaries in this situation. So the best way is to go into the ventricle, cross the valve, go into the ventricle. The ideal uh, valve uh, catheter to do that, to engage the coronaries would be a Judkins lift. Some operators are uh, comfortable with the XPLAD or EBU system. Uh, go into the ventricle or the wire, pull it back, remove the wire, and then you come across the coronaries ostium like that. So now we are not sure in the perpendicular or the coplanar view whether the valve is in line with the coronaries. So how do you make it? How, how can you engage the left coronary uh, better? So for that, you need to go back to this uh, S-shaped curve, on the three, which you get on the three-man shoe, and you have RAO, LAO projections. So the best way to engage the left coronary artery is to separate the left coronary cusp from the non-coronary and the right coronary cusp. So in order to do that, you need to come into a LAO cranial projection here. So that is the right non-coronary cusp fusion, whereas uh, RAO caudal we saw it's a left-right cuspal fusion. So in this view, the right and non-coronary cusp will be to the one side, and then you have the left cusp to the other side. And if you can't engage in this position, you must go to the arm fast view, which is RAO cranial. And you see the valve like this, perfect circle. And then the coronaries are seen very well. You can make out if the catheter is engaging catheter is anterior or posterior to the valve. You can easily engage the coronaries in this position. That's one simple tip for engaging the coronaries if you have issues of the frame coming across the coronary ostia. Right. See, the other thing of uh, making sure if the commission alignment is perfect is, thing is already shown on the fluoroscopy, is that you have commission post on the coplanar view as three lines. You have the right cusp here, the non-coronary and the left cusp here. And if this is perfectly uh, center or between the two, the middle, cu middle uh, commissure post, then you have perfect uh, commissure alignment. And if you have uh, two of the commissures on left of the screen in left, right, cusp overlap view, and the other one on the other side, then you have perfect commissure alignment. And suppose uh, if the center line is slightly off this way, or the commissures are slightly off toward this direction, then you have minimal misalignment, 0 to 15 degrees misalignment. And if you have the extreme uh, commission post going on the other side, then you have severe misalignment. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, so uh, Damodran, uh, you know, we talk, about, uh, we talk about lifetime management. What is there in this valve which says lifetime management? I mean, we all we saw was commercial coronary alignment. Is there evidence for low pacemaker rates? Is there evidence for less PVL? I mean, those are the things which are also equally important than just getting into the coronaries. Uh, so just tell us more about uh, the valve itself. Is it a package in itself? Yeah. The, since because it has a um, very good columnar strength, uh, we, during deployment, the stability will be there so that we can uh, precisely deploy the valve in case of any uh, risk for, uh, risk for uh, PPM. We can precisely deploy the stent, I mean, the valve, wherever uh, we want to, uh, I mean, locate it. Apart from that, the big cells, diameters, that is obviously the major, I mean, selling feature for this valve for a coronary. Line. Yeah, uh, there's... Uh you know, uh, nearly 50% of the valves which are being used across the world are in, in intermediate sizes. Uh, so this vast array of sizes has been looked at. Obviously, in registry, randomized data will tell us more, uh, whereby uh, PVLs seem to be lower than other valves. 
primarily maybe because it's just a better fit in terms of uh, half sizes, which are 50% of the use across the world. The ability to have large sizes up to 32 millimeters is a, is a huge asset, uh, which is not available truly with any balloon expandable valve. And even the self-expandable large valves are, are uh, very difficult to use. Uh, there is I think, some predictability uh, there's, also. There's a predictability of implantation, yeah, and of course, is less. lower pacemaker rates have also been uh, again reported. Lower foreshortening also. No? And that foreshortening issue, uh, which is now in two cells equally distributed on either side rather than just on one side, which is always a very unpredictable situation when it happens only from the left ventricular side, and, and, and it's low. So actually, it seems that in all ways, uh, the Myval octocore seems to have an ease of implantation, but a more predictable and accurate implantation in terms of size, precise sizing, and, and precise implantation. Uh, the bands on it, the marker on it, also perhaps help the situation. Any comments on that? Your, you know, your uh, two two comments from um, from what I hear in my function as the PI of this study. So there, there have been reports, not published yet though, uh, of lower pacemaker rates uh, when changing to the system, and, and that uh, is uh, in theory, of course, because uh, uh, you have to, you, with the intermediate sizes, you, you have accurate sizing and less oversizing, less pressure, uh, and more accurate placement. So that's uh, reports coming out of uh, uh, Holland. And, um, and the other thing, just to mention again, there will be randomized data. There will be uh, large series, two large uh, series, independent of each other, uh, that compare with standard systems. So we will actually have data to see uh, uh, whether all these things that we've been discussing now, whether they lead to improved clinical outcomes. Just, just, one, just one question, Ivan. Um, what's the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy, or can we just use single antiplatelet for this device? That's that's an excellent question, and, and I'll pass that on to to Michael. Well, for for us, uh, no matter it is a balloon expandable or self expandable valve, we just give single antiplatelet. Remember, these patients, although this is low risk patients, of most of our TAFI patients. Uh, elderly, lady, uh, high breathing risk patients in this locality in Asia. So we will usually go for a uh, single uh, antiplatelet aspirin only. So aspirin is the drug of choice? Yes. Yes, that's for us, yes. So, so, I mean, we, antiplatelet therapy is a very important issue, Rosalie. I'm glad that you raised it because these are elderly patients who are very prone to, to bleeding. Uh, and the only sort of... Uh, Patients who would val who would uh, who would perhaps merit beyond a single antiplatelet are perhaps extremely small valves, valve and valve, uh, to an extent where you actually put a small a valve into a small valve. For me, that that becomes or they have other indications, atrial fibrillation, or they, they have they other have in on, indications. Uh, yeah. But those two categories where you have a small valve or a valve in a small valve are my indications for more than a single antiplatelet therapy. Uh, any other questions or any other comments from you, from, from your end? From my end, I think uh, we've seen a very excellent demonstration of the novel uh, Myval Octocar. It is an advancement, uh, we believe, which has not existed before. And of course, the randomized trials are going to be the real test of its uh, potential procedural and clinical advantages. The procedural advantages are quite obvious to the operators, and you've seen that. The fact that it's just plain mounted on a balloon, the fact that it can be put, the smaller valves can be put through a 12 millimeter, uh, a 12 French sheath, and the fact that it's got predictable implantation characteristics and a variety of sizes to suit the analy in itself is procedural advantages. How this translates into clinical advantages would perhaps come through more with the two large randomized studies which are on at the moment. And uh, it would be clearly uh, the, the, the addition of, uh, of uh, alignments, both commercial and carny, adds on to the features 
of the well-established MyVal platform, which now becomes the octocore uh, for, for, uh, for the management of patients on a much longer term basis. So we come to the same point, give the patient the best valve at this time, and then you avoid problems and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, mishaps for the future in a lifetime management of a patient with severe aortic stenosis. Thank you very much.